Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Hong Kong Convention and Exhibition Center, and thank you for attending the Shaw Prize Award Presentation Ceremony 2014. I am Dudu Chen, your presenter for this evening. Good evening. I'm Leon Ko. I feel very honored to be the presenter again tonight for the presentation ceremony of this distinguished international award to witness the outstanding achievements of the Shaw Laureates. Known as the Nobel Prize of the East, the Shaw Prize is one of the most representative international awards of its kind. Similar to previous years, we have top-notch scientists and scholars from various parts of the world gathered here tonight. Now let us once again give a brief introduction of the Shaw Prize. The Shaw Prize was established in November 2002 under the auspices of Mr. Run Run Shaw. It consists of three categories, namely the Shaw Prize in Astronomy, the Shaw Prize in Life Science and Medicine, as well as the Shaw Prize in Mathematical Sciences. The first presentation ceremony was held in 2004. It is an annual award and has been held for the 11th year running. The purpose of the Shaw Prize is to honor individuals who are currently active in their respective fields and who have recently achieved distinguished and significant advances, who have made outstanding contributions in academic and scientific research or applications, or who in other domains have achieved excellence. The award is dedicated to future societal progress, enhancing quality of life and enriching humans' spiritual civilization. Nomination and adjudication commenced in September last year. The results of the Shaw Prize 2014 were announced at the press conference held on the 27th of May this year. There are six Shaw laureates this year, and tonight they are here to receive the honor. On behalf of the Shaw Prize Foundation, we wish to thank each one of our Shaw laureates for flying all the way to Hong Kong to attend the presentation ceremony. This is also an excellent opportunity for distinguished scientists to get together and share their invaluable experiences, which no doubt will be of great benefit to scientific research. We're also honored that during their period of stay in Hong Kong, the Shaw laureates would visit local universities and would give lectures on their studies and research. Academics and students can grasp this golden opportunity to exchange views with the world's most eminent scientists. These lectures will be videotaped and uploaded onto the Shaw Prize official website to enable academics all over the world to share and appreciate the research findings and valuable experience of the Shaw laureates. This year, the Shaw Prize will co-organize a public forum with the Hong Kong Science Museum. Students and general public who are interested in scientific research can make use of this opportunity to exchange views with the Shaw laureates and to share their invaluable experiences. It is time for the commencement of Shaw Prize Award Presentation Ceremony 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise to welcome our officiating guest, the Honorable C.Y. Leung, Chief Executive of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of the People's Republic of China, accompanied by Mrs. Regina Leung. Mr. and Mrs. Leung, please. Please remain standing to welcome the six Shaw Laureates to enter the presentation hall. This year, we have three Shaw Laureates in astronomy. Firstly, Professor Daniel Eisenstein, please. Now, Professor Sean Cole, please. Also, Professor John Peacock, please. We now welcome the Shaw Laureates in Life Science and Medicine 2014. This year we have two Shaw Laureates. Firstly, Professor Katsutoshi Mori, please. Professor 
Sir Peter Walter, please. Lastly, the Shaw Laureate in Mathematical Sciences, 2014, Professor George Lustig, please. We will now invite the Chairman of the Board of Adjudicators, Professor Chen Ning Yang, to deliver a speech. Mr. Chief Secretary, ladies and gentlemen, science in different fields made great progress in the 20th century. But this progress also brought about unprecedented difficulties for mankind in the 21st century. Recognizing this, Mr. Shaw decided a dozen years ago to found the Shaw Prizes in three scientific fields to encourage and foster scientific research to help address these difficult problems for mankind. Tonight, at this uh, first Shaw Prize Award ceremony after Mr. Shaw passed away at age 107, it is appropriate for us to pay respect to the generosity, foresight, and vision of this great philanthropist. We will continue to follow him in spirit and to expand the horizons of his vision through the Shaw Prizes. Shaw Prizes are awarded in three scientific fields, astronomy, life science, and medicine, and mathematical sciences. These are among the scientific fields that enjoy vigorous and vibrant progress in recent years. Tonight, we shall honor six scientists in these three fields for their distinguished contributions. They are Professors Eisenstein, Cole, and Peacock in astronomy, Professors Mori and Walter in life sciences and medicine, and Professor Lustig in mathematical sciences. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Yang, and please take your seat. We now invite the Chairman of the Selection Committee for the Shaw Prize in Astronomy, Professor Peter Gowright, to deliver a speech. My job is to give you a taste of the accomplishments that are being honored by the Shaw Prize in Astronomy. These derive from large surveys of the positions and redshifts of galaxies. Galaxies are not uniformly distributed in space. Rather, they cluster in a manner similar to the way that people cluster on the surface of the Earth. As with people, the number of galaxies and the strength of their clustering increased with time. Because of the finite speed of light, astronomers observe these effects directly. Unlike archaeologists and anthropologists, we do not have to rely on artifacts. In reviewing an astronomical publication, it is common to use the term money plot for a diagram that displays the most pertinent results. Given the generosity of the Shaw Prize, this terminology is particularly appropriate here. On the left, uh, we see the peak of the galaxy correlation function at what's known as the baryon acoustic, or BAO scale, of about 500 million light years. The blue line is the best fit to the data, and the red line is the best fit of a model without the BAO. Now, what is the BAO? This is the trace of sound waves generated by primordial density perturbations that arose shortly after the Big Bang and later seeded the formation of galaxies. It provides a standard ruler with many applications. Its detection in the spatial correlation of galaxies was reported in two papers by the laureates 
in 2005. Oriented perpendicular to the line of sight, the angle subtended by this ruler calibrates the relation between distance and redshift. Oriented parallel, it determines the Hubble or expansion parameter as a function of redshift. Another application of the BAO confirmed that the expansion of the universe recently transitioned from deceleration to acceleration. The figure on the right provides a statistical distribution of redshift space distortions, sometimes known as RSD. Transverse separations are unaffected by peculiar velocities. Radial separations are stretched along the line of sight at small separations and flattened at large ones. A galaxy's redshift provides a distance estimate that is contaminated by the radial component of its peculiar velocity with respect to the smooth expansion of the universe. Density in homogeneities and peculiar velocities go hand in hand. The former are the source of gravitational perturbations that excite the latter. Peculiar velocities then act to enhance the density fluctuations that cause them. Correlating density fluctuations and peculiar velocities determines or allows us to determine the mean mass density of the universe. Both the BAO and the RSD test the theory of structure formation, the former by showing how a feature is preserved and the latter by measuring how structure is presently growing. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Goldrad, and please take your seat. We now invite the chairman of the selection committee for the Shaw Prize in Life Science and Medicine, Professor Yud Wai Kan, to deliver a speech. The Honorable Chief Executive, Lady Mona Shaw, distinguished guests. Proteins, the building blocks of all organisms, are constantly being made inside our cells. But when first made, they are linear chains of amino acid that must be folded into proper three-dimensional shapes before they can function properly. Over research spanning over two decades, Professor Kasatorshi Mori of Kyoto University and Peter Walters of the University of California in San Francisco and their colleagues identified the molecular path pathway that guide these processes and assure their accuracy. To undergo folding, about one third of newly synthesized amino acid chains enter a structure called a cell called endoplasmic reticulum, or ER for short. ER acts at the first station checkpoint and only well-folded proteins are allowed to exit to be shuttled into their destinations. In this way, the cell ascertains that it has only properly working protein machines to sense and communicate with other cells in the organism. For the ER to work optimally, it must have adequate capacity to keep up with the rate of protein synthesis if too little ER is present to handle the number of proteins being synthesized, a logjam of misfolded proteins ensues within the ER, a condition known as ER stress. In the early 1990s, Professors Walter and Mori in studying yeast cells, independently determined that a sensor molecule embedded in the ER membrane called IRE1 detects ER stress. IRE1 then sends a signal to the cell nucleus 
that prompts the expression of other genes to help the cell recreate, re, uh, regain equilibrium. IRE1 was the first such molecule discovered and led the way to the discovery of a complex cascade of interwoven pathway in animal cells and human cells, collectively known as the unfolded protein response. The response temporarily slows down protein synthesis and stimulate and simultaneously increases the abundance of ER. In this way, the cell constantly balances the protein load and folding capacity. Unfolded proteins can be a menace. If a cell's balance between ER abundance and protein synthesis cannot be re restored fairly quickly, the unfolded protein's response shifts to a signal mode that causes the cell to die. Therefore, uncontrolled ER stress can cause diseases. For example, in retinitis pigmentosa, unfolded proteins exceed the, the unfolded protein response, inducing eye retinal cell death and blindness. In type 2 diabetes, a continued demand for insulin can overwhelm the ER and cause the death of the insulin-producing cells. And in neuro neurodegenerative diseases such as Parkinsonian's and Alzheimer's diseases, insufficient unfolding protein response from ER stress may kill neurons as protein aggregates accumulate. On the other hand, Invading viruses or even cancer cells may hijack the unfolded protein response to create additional ER for their own uh, proliferation. Thus, the initial discoveries by Maury and Walter in Baker yeast have laid the foundation for protein quality control that are fundamental and paramount in mammalian cells of all kind and hold promise to new therapeutic strategies in diseases. Finally, we, congratu we congratulate Professor Maury and Walter for winning the 2014 Lasker Award, widely known as the American Nobel. The Shaw Prize is proud that he has predicted their Lasker Award as well as three other previous Lasker Award laureates in, uh, in addition, with his short history, the Shaw Prize had predicted a total of seven Nobel laureates in, phys in physiology or medicine, in chemistry and in physics, justifiably earning his reputation as the so-called Asian Nobel. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Kan, and kindly take your seat. We now invite Professor Carrado de Concini, member of the Selection Committee for the Shaw Prize in Mathematical Sciences, to address the audience. Professor de Concini, please. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Peter Sarnak, who is the chair of the Mathematical Science Selection Committee, cannot be here. So he asked me to represent him and give the introduction to the work of the Mathematical Science 2014 laureate, Professor George Lustig. This is for me a special honor and pleasure, not only for the admiration of the great mathematical achievements of George Lustig, but also because I was his student, probably his first student. Lustig's work on representation theory, the study of how to realize an algebraic structure, such as a group or an algebra, in terms of linear transformation of a linear space, has completely revolutionized this subject. And furthermore, has changed a lot of the mathematics surrounding it. 
His work combines sophisticated techniques, a remarkable ingenuity, an amazing combinatorial insight, and the capability and patience of performing very integrated computations. After some early work in topology, Lustig started working in representation theory in 1973. I should add that the, the work in topology is also very important. His first concern has been the study of representation of finite Chevalli groups. This is a monumental work which is keeping him busy until now. After publishing a book regarding the general linear group, in his 1976 work in collaboration with the Ligne, Lustig constructs a large class of representations using completely new methods for the subject, such as a Ladic homology of a class of algebraic varieties now called the Ligne Lustig varieties. To understand the incredible insight of Lustig, let me quote a recent interview of Pierre de Ligne. Lustig had the whole picture on how to use a Ladic homology for group representations, but he did not know the technique. I knew the technique uh, of a Ladic homology, and I would give him the tools he needed. In subsequent work, Lustig has been able to completely classify the reducible characters of such groups and give an algorithmic procedure to compute them. Protein in this he has introduced an impressive number of new tools. Let me remind such tools as the theory of character shifts and that of the canonical basis for the Ecke algebras of the Weil group. This last subject deserves a further comment. In 1979, Kashdan and Lustig introduced in a completely combinatorial way a basis for the Ecke algebra, a sort of quantum deformation of the group algebra of a finite group, of a Weil group, of a reflection group. Even considering the case of the symmetric group of permutation, this is probably the most remarkable advance in the subject since the introduction of the young tableaus. They remarked that this basis had properties related to the topology of certain spaces, Schubert varieties, and to the algebra of a certain class of representation. They formalized these facts in a precise dictionary, the Kashdan lustig conjectures, which was proved for the topological part by Kashdan and Lustig themselves, and for the algebraic part by Bellinson and Bernstein and Brilisky Kashivara independently to the theory of D modules, differential system of equations with analytic coefficients. This set of ideas has had an enormous influence on the study of the topology of algebraic variety and furthermore be became a paradigm which Lustig has used repeatedly to discover many kind of different phenomena in representation theory. This is not, there is no time here to cover more of Lustig's career, which spans over four decades. As a last theme, let me mention his contribution to the theory of quantum groups, originally defined by Jimbo and Drinfeld, inspired by the study of quantum integrable systems. Lustig was able not only to deduce an impressive number of results internal to the theory, but also to use it to deduce certain important, more classical results. For example, the definition of a canonical basis for the irreducible representation of a compact Lie group. On behalf of Peter Sarnak and the rest of the selection committee, we wish to congratulate Professor George Lustig. Thank you, Professor De Concini, and please take your seat. We will now proceed to the Shaw Prize Award Presentation Ceremony 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're much honored to have the Honorable C.Y. Leung, Chief Executive of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of the People's Republic of China to officiate at the presentation ceremony.
We will present the Shaw Prize in Astronomy 2014. This year, there are three recipients. The first half of the award goes to Professor Daniel Eisenstein. The other half will be equally shared by Professor Sean Cole and Professor John Peacock. Professor Eisenstein, please. We are able to use this 500 million light years distance as our meter stick. And then we can see them yet again, their imprint is 10 billion years after the Big Bang. Also the recipient in Astronomy 2014 is Professor Sean Cole. Prior to the 2DF project, the biggest such survey had been about um, 12,000 galaxies, whereas we pushed that up to a quarter of a million, so it was a huge leap forward for, for its day. And also the recipient in Astronomy 2014 is Professor John Peacock. We can determine the redshifts of these galaxies and hence their distance away from us. And that enables us to build up a, a three-dimensional map of the galaxies. May we invite Professor Daniel Eisenstein to deliver his acceptance speech. Professor Eisenstein, please. Thank you. It is a tremendous honor to accept this award. I very much want to thank Professor Yang and Professor Goldreich and the rest of the award committee for selecting me, the Shaw Foundation for hosting this wonderful week here, the Chief Executive for officiating the ceremony, uh, and of course the late Sir Run Run Shaw and Lady Shaw for establishing this prize to recognize our field. Finally, I wish to thank Lady Shaw for her hospitality this week. We live in a fascinating time in cosmology. It is amazing to think that we are cataloging the universe in such detail and uncovering new forces and types of matter yet undetected on Earth. The tools that nature have given us, such as these sound waves created in the first fraction of a second after the Big Bang, are fascinating in their own right. But even more astonishing is that these tools work, allowing us to measure the formation of cosmic structure and the expansion history of our universe. I have been very fortunate throughout my career to have wonderful colleagues. We sometimes refer to the astronomical community, and it truly is a community. There are many things I enjoy about astronomy, but one of the most important is that it's a collaborative activity. I have, for 15 years, been a member of the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, uh, and it's been a tremendous experience. I have many, many wonderful colleagues uh, in the Sloan Survey and in my other projects. And so I thank the Shaw Foundation for this personal recognition, but I am particularly glad that this honor reflects also well on my collaborators and indeed on the very idea of astronomical collaborations. I'm very thankful that my parents, Robert and Carolyn, are here with me tonight to share in this celebration. Of course, we are all shaped closely by our parents and by our families, and I'm certainly no exception. Thank you so much for what you two have taught me and what you've brought to my life. As a few of you know, the Shaw Prize was only one of two big events for me this summer. My second son, Julian, was born in July. And as a result, my wife, Annalisa, and my other son, Alex, couldn't travel to this event. But I want to thank Annalisa for all of her love and support in our 10 years together, and I'll be looking forward to bringing the memories of this week back to her and my children. Thank you to all of you here uh, who came here tonight to celebrate science. And thanks again to the Shaw Foundation for sponsoring this evening. It is with deep gratitude that I accept this award. Thank you, Professor Eisenstein. We now invite also the Shaw Laureate in Astronomy 2014, Professor Sean Cole, to deliver his acceptance speech. Professor Cole, please. Mr. Chief Executive, Lady Shaw, members of the Shaw family, Sir Yang, Peter Goldreich and members of the Chaw Prize Selection Committee, ladies and gentlemen, I am very honoured to accept this prestigious prize at this wonderful event. 
My list of thanks naturally starts with my father and late mother for decades of encouragement and support. Also, a huge thank you for the patience and understanding of my wife, Maggie, and our children. Alongside Daniel Eisenstein, the breakthroughs for which John Peacock and I are being honoured are for work performed as part of the 2DF Galaxy survey team. Throughout the project, it was a pleasure to work with this team, and we owe the 30 strong people in that team a profound thanks. I'm a keen fan of Formula One motor racing. What impresses me most about the sport is not the power of the cars nor the skill of the drivers, but the teamwork. Everything, the cutting edge design and manufacture of the engines, the aerodynamics of the car, the split second timing of the pit crew, and the decisions of the race strategists, has to be near perfect for the team member to be on the podium. I'd like to thank the 2DF GRS Formula One team. Before I mention specific people, let me stress that the 2DF team didn't compete in just one or two Grand Prix races. 2DF GRS made many advances, characterizing and understanding the local galaxy population and its dependence on environments. In many of these important advances, the people I'm about to mention were at the wheel leading the research. I'm hoping John will cover gaps I leave, but those I'd particularly like to thank are Keith Taylor and Ian Lewis, the instrument team who built the 2DF engine. 20 years on, this innovative, highly multiplex robotic spectrograph is yet to be surpassed. Steve Maddox and George Astathew, designers and builders of the APM car, the galaxy survey that 2DF targeted and turned from a two-dimensional map into a three-dimensional map of a local universe. Gavin Dalton, the engineer who took the hardware we were given and devised a way to make it work for us. Will Sutherland, for automating how we deal with the masses of telemetry and accurately extract the useful information. The team principals, Matthew Collis and John Peacock. Our co-driver, Will Percival, for his involvement in the large-scale structure analysis. Peter Norberg, for his modeling of the flaws in the 2DF survey, so enabling us to win, their strategy to win, despite the impact damage to the front wing. And finally, to my personal trainer and agent, Carlos Frank, for his continuous support and encouragement. In 2005, Sloan and 2DF made the first detection of the cosmic ruler provided by the echo of sound waves from the early universe. Others are now using this ruler to make cosmological measurements pushing further to make measurements that will reveal the properties of dark energy will increasingly require effective international collaborations. With this in mind, I'm very pleased that the Shaw Foundation is promoting the achievements of 2DF and Sloan in this way. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Coe, and please take your seat on stage. We now invite also the Shaw Laureate in Astronomy 2014, Professor John Peacock, to deliver his acceptance speech. Mr. Chief Executive, Lady Shaw, Professors Yang and Goldreich, members of the Shaw Prize Committee, I can only echo my colleagues in saying what a tremendous and humbling honour it is to share in this year's Shaw Prize. I'm delighted to be able to accept the award. I'm here as a result of the support and opportunities that I've had throughout my career. My parents always gently encouraged me to try hard at whatever I was attempting, and it's wonderful to have my mother here at this ceremony. I benefited from the best education that the British state could offer, entirely free of charge to my generation. And I've had the love of my family, my children, Duncan, Imogen, and Sophie, and above all, Heather. I'm so glad she can be here with me tonight. I hope they can all forgive me for all the time I spent with computers rather than with them. I've been fortunate to have worked in cosmology during a transformational era. We now know with confidence many startling facts about the universe. For example, that the expansion of the universe is speeding up. And as a consequence, all of space, including the space before us here in this very room, is filled with a mysterious substance called dark energy. Now, such knowledge depends on the growth of astronomical technology. And the work being on it tonight 
is in part made possible by the two-degree field facility on the Anglo-Australian Telescope. Many people deserve a share of the credit for this revolutionary facility, and Sean has already mentioned several names. I would like to highlight a few in particular. Russell Cannon and Brian Boyle had perhaps the unenviable task of being the telescope directors who had to take the responsibility for delivering a working instrument on the telescope. I'd also like to pick out Richard Ellis. He was the initial UK chairman of the UK-Australian consortium that created the 2DF Galaxy Redshift Survey. And this was a position that I was greatly honoured to inherit from him, working together with my partner on the Australian side, Matthew Collis. Now, large research consortia of this sort are common in astronomy today, but less so in the mid-1990s when we got started. In indeed, our 30 or so team members would seem relatively puny by modern standards. But it was a good number. It was few enough that we could all understand what each other was doing. It was an incredibly exciting time as we all realized that things were going very well and the results from the survey were going to be revolutionary. Now, in performing this work, we were benefiting from the partnership that Britain and Australia created with the Anglo-Australian Telescope, dating back to the mid-1970s. For more than 30 years, this was one of the most fruitful scientific collaborations that either country had engaged in. So I think it's nice and symbolic to be celebrating this record of achievement here, very roughly, by astronomical standards, halfway between the two partners. And when you look at the state of the world today, you can't help but wish there was more understanding and cooperation of this sort. I feel it's shown me the best of what humans are capable of, and I'm deeply grateful to have had that opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Peacock. And please take your seat on stage. Now comes the Shaw Prize in Life Science and Medicine 2014. This year, the award is shared equally by two recipients. The first share goes to Professor Kazutoshi Mori. I need to get gene which is able to cure this white cell. Then I checked it, and then it has a gene. It's a IRE gun. And also the recipient of the Shaw Prize in Life Science and Medicine 2014 is Professor Peter Walter. In cancer cells, for example, we would like to make the unfolded protein response more responsive to unfolded proteins, which are there in the cancer cell, that it will activate a suicide problem. Firstly, we would like to invite Professor Katsutoshi Mori to deliver his acceptance speech. Professor Mori, please. It is my very great pleasure and honor to receive the prestigious Shaw Prize. It was my childhood dream to become a PhD scientist. This dream came true because although my family was not rich, my parents, who are here in the audience, worked hard and allowed me to continue at school as, for as long as I wish. I studied biochemistry at Kyoto University. After graduating, I obtained a permanent position at a local university. This was very fortunate because Japan had no postdoc system at that time. Many PhD scientists are waiting for the opening of the academic position by doing a part-time job. So I worked hard there but I could not enjoy the biochemical project I pursued. So I decided to quit that job and, to, and go to the United States to learn molecular biology. People around me worry about my decision because it seemed too challenging. But I took a chance for the, reason, for the simple reason that I want to do something more interesting and important. It was a new endeavor with new, absolutely no promise of success. 
Very fortunately, my wife said, my wife said yes to my decision, and Mary J. Gessing and Joe Sandberg accepted me as a postdoc. It was 25 years ago in 1989 at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center. I first encountered the uh, unfold protein response, UPR. This happy meeting was, ch was to change my entire life. Far from losing anything in Texas, I, in fact, discovered IREVEN, the first molecule involved in the East UPR. After four and a half years in Texas, I came back to Japan and obtained a position at the Heatric Research Protein Institute in Kyoto. And very fortunately, I could continue work on the East UPR. And then I was able to move on to the mammalian UPR and succeed in identifying its basic scheme. I'm heartfully, heartfully grateful to all my mentors, colleagues, and collaborators for their guidance and effort in gaining globally competitive edge in the field. In particular, I'd like to mention the name of Takashi Yura, who hired me at the institute and gave me a critical advice when I tried to identify transmission factors specific to the East UPR. And Shidero Yoshida, now a professor at the Hyogo Prefectural University, who is also here, who made a breakthrough in the analysis of mammalian UPR. Without them, I would not be standing before you now. I will continue doing my best to expand the frontiers of our research into the unfold protein response. Thank you again, honoring me with show prize. Thank you, Professor Mori, and please take your seat on stage. We now invite also the Shaw Laureate in Life Science and Medicine 2014, Professor Peter Walter, to deliver his acceptance speech. Professor Walter, please. Honorable Chief Executive, Ms. Mona Shaw, Shaw Foundation and Council members, colleagues, friends, and guests. Four years ago, the Nobel Laureate, Joe Goldstein, issued the ultimate advice on how to win a major scientific prize. In his short essay, he quotes the British mathematician Godfrey Hardy, who defined in the early 1900s scientific beauty as an art form, in which outstanding science gives you cerebral chills and intellectual kicks that combine the qualities of significance, generality, and unexpectedness. Biology, however, is not mathematics, nor is it physics, nor chemistry. As biologists, we are not free to impose our own axioms to inject beauty into our work. In biology, Mother Nature presents our playing field, and it is our task to decipher how it works. Disconcertingly, Nature deploys a strategy of random walk, of mutation and selection, leading to the evolution of the world that surrounds us. She then presents us with the most fascinating puzzles to untangle, the inherently unpredictable Rube Goldberg machines that make up a living cell. When we begin working on the unfolded protein response that we celebrate here today, we found ourselves traveling along a road that seemed comfortable and predictable. We asked but a simple question, how does one part of the cell know what is happening in another? And we got what at first appeared to be a simple answer. But suddenly, the ground shifted, and we stepped into a morass in which the seemingly familiar dots that before gave us a sense of security no longer connected. Walking on, undeterred, we deciphered one of the most unusual cell internal communication lines, made up almost entirely from an unprecedented potpourri of repurposed components. To top it off, the salient features of what we learned from simple single-celled brewer's yeast hold true for our own cells, and these features now emerge as impacting players in a plethora of human diseases. 
giving us hope that our astonishing findings will be translated one day into tangible benefits for humankind. My main point here is that none of this was predictable. Neither I nor Kazumori stand here today as genius mathematicians akin to Hardy or as artists who begin with an empty canvas to control and control over the elegance of their work. We are explorers, not designers, facing the chaotic randomness of evolution. We diligently deciphered one of nature's guarded mysteries, and only then, only then, could we condense our findings to their most elementary beauty. To us, it has been a fantastic journey, filled with adventure, cerebral chills, and intellectual kicks. But only in the end did it all combine, serendipitously, into a story of unexpectedness and, we hope, lasting significance and generality. Lastly, discovery science never is a work of a single individual. I'm standing here today on the shoulders of my family, my mentors, our numerous collaborators, and the more than 30 graduate students and postdoctoral fellows who joined my lab to work on this project over the last 20 years. It is their courage and spirit for adventure that allowed us to decipher the inner workings of the unfolded protein response. Without their invaluable contributions, I would not be here today. The honor of receiving this award, therefore, really belongs to all of us. We are thrilled to be here today, and we deeply appreciate that our work has been so well received. Thank you for such a nice celebration. Thank you, Professor Walter. And please take your seat on stage. Lastly, the Shaw Prize in Mathematical Sciences 2014 goes to Professor George Lustig. And so I tried to understand the general group by representing it by matrices. That's what the presentation theory is about. We will now invite the Shaw Laureate in Mathematical Sciences 2014, Professor George Lustig, to deliver his speech. Professor Lustig, please. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Chief Executive, Lady Shaw, Professor Young, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor and a pleasure for me to accept the, the Shaw Prize in Mathematics. And I thank the Shaw Foundation and the members of the Show Prize Selection Committee for this rather unexpected surprise. And uh, I want to thank my teachers, collaborators, and students for making this award possible. And I also want to thank uh, my wife, Gong Chin, and my sister, Eva, for their support over the years. Uh, well, I think this award is not only for me, but also for my area of mathematics, representation theory. Uh, and I would like to say a few words about mathematics, but I will be brief. Uh, unlike other sciences, it deals purely with ideas, and some people regard it as an art, not, not as a science. <clears throat> uh, according to uh, Gauss, the great mathematician and astronomer of the early 19th century, Mathematics is a queen of science. And I, here I should add that uh, Gauss being uh, both mathematician and astronomer, he would have qualified for two show prizes if he was uh, uh, alive today. In many cases, scientific theories were developed based on ideas created by mathematicians many years earlier. For example, the development of quantum physics in the early 20th century was based on Kelly's theory of matrices and on Kelly's introduction of abstract groups in the middle of 19th century. Actually, both the theory of matrices and that of groups are ingredients of representation theory with which most of my work is concerned. Uh, but I believe that uh, most mathematicians, myself included, uh, don't do mathematics with a view towards application but rather for the sake of its beauty. Applications usually come many years later. Uh, 
So, thank you. Thank you, Professor Lustig. Once again, congratulations to all the six Shaw laureates. We now invite our officiating guest, the Honorable C.Y. Le, to stay on stage for a group photo. Ladies and gentlemen, the Shaw Prize Award Presentation Ceremony 2014 has now come to a successful conclusion. Scientific research has embedded boundless possibilities. We look forward to seeing you again next year and to witness more accomplishments of distinguished scientists and scholars. Goodbye, and see you next year. Good night, goodbye, see you next year. <laughs>